I improved my heart rate variability from being in the 70s to regularly surpassing 120s and sometimes being in the 150s. But the craziest part is that this transformation happened in just six months. So let's start with diet. Most people think the most important thing is what you eat. And while there are some partial truths behind it, when you eat and how much you eat is even more important. Eating before bed literally killed my HRV. You can see my stress levels of when I ate food before bed compared to when I didn't. And the reason behind this is when you eat close to your bedtime, your body diverts blood flow to the digestive system, which increases your heart rate, which results in a lower HRV. Essentially, digestion requires a lot of energy and resources, which takes away from the body's ability to recover and repair itself during sleep. To fix this, stop eating at least 3 hours before bed. However, if you want to fully optimize, stop eating at least 10 hours before bed. And when I started doing this, my HRV shot up to the moon. But now that you know when to eat, you must also eat the right foods. For example, when wanting to boost specifically for HRV, a study from North Carolina found that a higher intake of fish, vegetables, and fruit generally led to beneficial changes in HRV. It was also said that there were significant associations between high cholesterol and low HRV. Individuals on a low sodium diet had a higher HRV than when they had been placed on high sodium diets, meaning you need to eliminate processed foods as much as possible. I used to love going to Chipotle thinking it was healthy, only to discover that it was actually lowering my HRV due to the seed oils that they were using. And this is the phase when I tested it out. You can see a huge dip for a couple months. So basically, instead of eating out, I've been following Brian Johnson's blueprint diet plus meat fish, and eggs. Now, there are multiple ways to be healthy. You can do carnivore, keto, paleo. There's so many great diet these days. But my main pitch in improving HRV is try and stay consistent on whatever diet works for you and avoid processed foods, seed oils, or tap water. Basically, enjoy real, actual food. Now, an observation I've made is basically the less you eat, the higher the HRV, and it does come at a cost. You know, I'll get so hungry that I'll just open up my fridge to see what's up. And usually when I feel hungry is when I actually unfortunately sleep and recover better and my HRV shoots up, but it sucks being hungry. Now, if you're a performance athlete or a bodybuilder, now this is suboptimal advice. Um, definitely don't follow this. But if you're going for health and productivity, I can 100% say this got me better in every single aspect. You know, while diet plays a big role in improving your HRV, it is only a prerequisite and without proper exercise, it is going to be impossible to get to your maximum genetic potential for your HRV. So how do we get there? Now, there are certain workouts that will drastically increase your HRV more than other exercises. And in fact, from a meta-analysis study, they broke it down into top three exercises that drastically increased your HRV. So first, the study emphasized the effectiveness of aerobic exercise, stating that aerobic exercise training can alter neuroregulatory control over the heart and that exercise training results in significant increases in RR intervals and high-frequency power. So basically, when you do aerobic exercises, what's going to happen is your heart rate is going to go up, and as the heart rate goes up, your heart starts to stretch more, increasing stroke volume and making the heart bigger and stronger, meaning your heart rate doesn't have to go up as high when you're at rest because your heart is becoming more efficient due to aerobic exercises. Which kind of leads to the next point, endurance exercise. In the next study, they did experiments on dogs. The paper notes that animals increase their HRV after endurance exercise due to enhanced baroreceptor control and vagal modulation. And it's kind of true because right now I'm training for a marathon and as I'm increasing my mileage, I also notice my HRV starts going up. Now, I'm pretty sure if I do hardcore endurance-based workouts, ultra marathons every day, my HRV is not going to go up. You know, the day after a marathon or even after long runs, my HRV always goes down. But usually what happens two to three days later is I tend to hit a PR on my HRV. 
So how I view endurance workout is you're basically taking a step back to move two to three steps forward. So one to two times a week of endurance training would be the sweet spot for endurance training. Up till this point, I'll say all the workouts are working below 90% of your maximum heart rate. But what would happen if you go beyond that? In this study, it says, High interval training significantly increased high frequency power, reflecting stronger parasympathetic activities. Meaning by getting your heart to twitch instead of stretch, it actually tries to find more ways to lower your resting heart rate, which makes your heart more efficient. If you do it occasionally, of course. So this is basically what I do for workouts. I know weightlifting doesn't contribute too much to HRV, but I still love to do it. So uh, I still put them into my workout program but I did start prioritizing my runs more than my lifting. So 80% of my workouts are all easy runs to build the engine for my heart. And once a week, I do a long run to build endurance. And I do one high intensity interval training, like track workouts or sprints or hill sprints to work on speed and my fast switch muscles. But if you don't get great sleep, and I use the word great here because not all sleep are the same, you are not going to increase your HRV. I used to have a hard time waking up, hard time falling asleep, and sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night and not be able to fall back asleep. But ever since I started implementing this simple strategy, I was able to solve all of my sleeping problems. And the three factors I decided to focus on to fix my sleep was what I do in the day, my sleeping environment, and tools to make me fall asleep faster and deeper. So starting with what you do, set a consistent bedtime because that will also help you wake up consistently at the same time. I usually sleep at eight and naturally wake up at 4.50. Then I try to get sunlight in the morning. I get my sun from my morning runs. The sun will help set your circadian rhythm. Then find a time to exercise because based on my experience, if I don't exert my body, I don't get as much restorative sleep as much as the day I exerted myself. So usually working out helps, being productive helps, try and exhaust your body throughout the day to get more restorative and deeper sleep. Also again, don't eat too late because your stress level is gonna be off the charts. Remember, your body can either recover or digest, but it can't do both at the same time. And last, wind down 30 minutes before going to bed so you can shut down your brain. Now, as a bonus, and this is only if you have time because I know all of you guys are busy, but one observation that I made is whenever I do Wim Hof breathing, I notice my respiratory rate goes down, meaning that I breathe less per minute. You know, I do it when I'm overwhelmed or feeling anxious, but it does help control my breath. Now, going to sleeping environment to make sleeping easier, I turn the AC to 67 degrees, use blackout curtains to eliminate all lights and listen to ayahuasca music. I know, um, it's weird but I noticed I get deeper sleep. Going to sleeping tools, I use mouse tape to practice nasal breathing. And if I'm struggling to fall asleep, which normally happens when I'm traveling, I start doing this thing called box breathing. Uh, you inhale in for six seconds, so hold for six seconds, and then exhale for six seconds, and then hold for six seconds, and then repeat that cycle over and over. I try to build that box breathing up to 10 seconds each, and by the time I reach 10, I'm usually exhausted because of the breathing exercise, and then I just naturally fall asleep. Now, if you're still watching this video and yet alone doing all the three things we just talked about, you are doing all the actions that will get you the 99% results of increasing your HRV. Now, the next couple of things we're gonna talk about are the hardcore stuff for the hardcore people who wants to take their health to the next level. So we'll talk about HRV devices, cold plunges, sauna, and how to lower your stress. So regarding sauna and cold plunge, they both didn't impact my HRV as much as good sleep, diet, and exercise. But in a study on the relationship between plasma volume and heart rate variability, sauna resulted in peak plasma volume expansion after four exposures with a likely large increase of 17.8% and reduction of heart rate when waking up by 10.2%, meaning it does impact HRV in a positive way. Also a cold shower, Andrew Huberman talks about it. You know, I think it will be better for me to reference a clip instead of me trying to mess up his research. But it's just a different way of training your cells in your body. It's going to create what is healthy stress. It's called homesis in the cells. And the more you expose your, your muscle cells or your brown fat cells to these kind of like healthy stresses, exercise, cold, and heat exposure, it's going to make them uh, better at like activating and also um, 
at uh, keeping you healthy. But yes, these small actions do compound over a long period of time, so I still do them. I've tested a couple HRV devices, Neurosim, Pulsetto, and Sensate. Now for Neurosim, I don't really have an opinion because I've never used it before. However, for Pulsetto, I've noticed it makes me feel more tired and it seemed to work. Pulsetto is designed to stimulate the vagus nervous system through gentle vibrations on the neck. You know, it almost feels like you're getting electrocuted to the neck, but somehow in a good way. But you know, the downside is you have to use a gel and you have to clean it up afterwards. But while Pulsetto seems to work, I honestly don't think I could say the same with Sensate. Sensate is a vibrating zone and it gives me uh, pseudoscience vibes. You know, it felt more like a placebo than an actual practical device of improving your HRV. So last aspect on increasing HRV is reducing stress. I found a really interesting case study, which is Warren Buffett. The reason why I think Warren Buffett is a great example for this, he works really hard, but also did what he loved, surrounded himself with people he loved, and despite his notoriously bad diet, he is well and alive, and I believe he just passed 90. And I believe that is the epitome of what happiness and low stress can do. Um, if you guys have any more HRV tips, uh, please leave them down below in the comments, but I'll see you guys next week.